Well, hey there, guys, and welcome back. On this week's show, it's part 14 of our Toys and Joys dump truck and pup trailer build. Can't believe we're at part 14, but here we are. The longest build series I have ever done on this show, but it's been a great one. Guys, when we finished up last week, we finished up with the dump box bottom and cutting that opening, just a simple square cut on the scroll saw. And we're gonna continue with that dump box today. So let's head over to the bench. Well, the very first piece that we're going to make on this week's show is going to be the dump box rear trim. Now, guys, this is a 3 8 inch thick piece of, in my case, cherry. And what I'm going to do first is I want to cut this dado at the top. Now, this dado is 1 8 of an inch wide and it is a half an inch deep. So how do you cut that? Well, what I have here is my shot made spline cutting jig. Now you can also use this to cut tenons, but what I have is I have a piece of 3 8 inch cherry here that is oversized for what I need. I have one of my shop made toggle clamps holding it all in place and the blade set to a half inch height and aligned with marks that I have placed there for this um, dado that's in the center. And all we're going to do is very carefully run it through the saw. Now guys, as I push this through, you can see hopefully right here, this is the angle bracket that would normally hold um, our frame or whatever it is we're putting the splines in. And there's one on this side too. The wood or the stock is butted up tight against that to give it support to prevent the blade from allowing it to throw it back at me. But either way, stand off to the side when you do this just in case. So let's fire up the saw and we're gonna get this dado cut. But once you get the dado cut, I have cut them into their final rough dimensions of one and a sixteenth wide by four and three quarters of an inch long. And guys, just scaling off the drawing, I have made, I know you're shocked, but I have made a marking template. So all we're going to do is I'm going to place this here on each one of our blanks, making sure that we have our dado at the top, the thinner section of our marking template. I'm going to mark these out. I'm going to rough cut them over at the scroll saw, and then we're going to finish them off over at the belt sander. Now you may note that there is a hole here that we need to drill. There is no dimensions here for this hole other than for the center point. Um, I've measured it off the drawing guys, and I'm getting 5 30 seconds of an inch. So we will drill that 5 30 second of an inch hole in both of our pieces. All right, and there is our two pieces made. Now, guys, one thing I would suggest here is to drill these holes up here at the same time. Align your pieces before you cut all of this and sand it. Align them so that they're perfectly aligned. Mark the hole on one of your pieces and drill them um, in a stack. That way, even if you're off just a tiny little bit, the holes will still align and your back door or your, your, the back of your dump bed is still going to sit flat across the top. Also, if you want to add the lights, you can. Um, I've added them here. You can just scale off our cover drawing once again because they are not here on the plans. So what we're gonna do now is we can glue these two pieces carefully in place, just like this. We're gonna glue them up and let them dry. And then I think we can start putting our dump bed together. Now guys, this is just a dry fit. Nothing in here is put together. Um, this is kind of a crazy glue up. So you want to do a dry fit for starters. And second of all, you want to try to glue it up all in one shot. You don't want to do this in stages. It's just too difficult. So because of that, I'm not going to film the glue up because I really need to concentrate on what I'm doing. I do have a couple of suggestions for you, however. Number one is do not put too much pressure up here coming in this way. 
This is one eighth of an inch with the grain upright. You will snap that in a heartbeat. But because it's one eighth of an inch, it's also curved a little bit. It has been allowed to curve. So we need to get clamps front to back to pull it flush with our base. Guys, use as little glue as you can um, to prevent as much squeeze out as you can. You want to use enough to hold it together, but you don't want to have a ton of cleanup to do as far as the squeeze out goes. And most importantly here, check this thing for square. As you're going, make sure that your back panels here, especially at the back where there's no support piece in between, make sure that they are square to the bottom of your dump bucket. Now, one thing I also can suggest is if you are not sure about getting this square and keeping the spacing here, you can cut a piece of wood just to go between the top edges to keep it completely uh, separated, I guess we'll say, to prevent it from folding in on itself as you apply clamping pressure. Either way, let's get this clamped up, glued up, and uh, when we're done then, we can move on to our cylinder box sides. Well, I've cut the two pieces that I need for our cylinder box sides. Now, here's the thing. All we need to do now is cut our cylinder box top. It has an angle here and the front has an angle at the top and the bottom. What angle is it that we're going to cut? Well, guys, it'll be the same as this angle right here. And I've measured this out to be 18 and a half degrees. But here's my dilemma. This section here is really the only part that shows how this whole thing assembles. And if we look here, the outside walls sandwich this um, front panel and our top sits on top. But here's the confusion here. The cylinder box top is an inch and a half wide. Now, if that covers, like it shows here, over to the outside edge of each one of our pieces here for the cylinder box sides, they are one eighth of an inch thick. So one half, and then our one box side will come here, that's one eighth, and our other one here will be one eighth, which means we're losing a quarter of an inch. One half minus a quarter is one and a quarter. Why is this one and three eighths of an inch wide? Something's not right. So which measurement is incorrect? Is this one here too wide or is this one here too narrow? I don't really know. So let me check around the plans and see if I can get that answer. Okay, well, I can't find anywhere in the prints to give me the answers that I want as to which one of those dimensions is correct. So I'm gonna go with the inch and a half. I'm gonna make this entire upright pillar an inch and a half wide, but I'm gonna change things up. I don't like this 1 16th of an inch thickness. And the fact that it shows here as in between the two 1 8th thick uprights, there's just no support there. There's no way to glue that. So again, I don't believe this is an imperative piece, an imperative measurement. It's basically a cover and it's a support for the pistons that make this go up and down. So what I've done is I have cut the front piece, I have made it an inch and a half wide, as well as the top piece, and I have made it out of one eighth thick material. In between our two side pieces, I have an inch and a quarter spacers put in there to keep the uh, two sides aligned. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this on the face, and then we're going to allow this to dry up. Now, truth be told, I didn't bother with this 18 and a half degree angle. That's getting a little on the fussy side, guys. So what we're gonna do is we are going to glue this up, let it completely dry, and then we can actually just use our sandpaper on our MDF and sand it flush to get that angle. Uh, I think you'll get a much better result and a much better fit. So let's get this piece glued in place and let it dry.
Okay, and I think that's a much more solid piece, definitely with a lot cleaner edge joinery here because you've sanded it down to the flat surface to get that perfect mating angle. Same with the one at the top, you sand it. This one here has not been done yet, but it'll just be done here, just like this on the sandpaper to get it flush with our lower half. Well, our next major pieces that we're going to make here are these dump box frames. There's two of them. Guys, simple table saw ripping and cutting. The only thing that might be a little off for you will be this angle on the end, which could be mistaken for a 45. But in reality, when we check it against the prints and measure it, it's a 36 degree angle. And you can cut that very simply with your miter fence. So those two pieces here are done. We will glue them in place on the bottom of our actual dump box. But our next pieces that we want to make are going to be the dump box top rails. So the first two pieces are these ones here. And simple cut again, a one eighth thick. Just cut it to the dimensions using your table saw to rip it to the width and then cross cut it to the length using your miter fence. But then we come to our next pieces. And those would be the 12 end brackets and the four top rail brackets. Guys, these are some small pieces, but there is one thing that they have in common. And that would be their three quarters of an inch across, both on the top rail bracket and the end bracket. So what I have is a couple pieces of cherry I, that is one eighth of an inch thick. I have ripped it to be three quarters of an inch wide, which is our common denominator here, and squared off one end. What we're going to do is we're going to take measurements. We're going to measure this all out, and these will actually be cut using a miter box, just our small parts miter box, and we'll get all of those pieces cut, both the four and the 12 of them, and um, we can start gluing our top rails together. Well, that sort of worked and it sort of didn't all at the same time. The problem is that when I use the miter box, I was under the impression or the assumption that these were 45 degree angles. They are not. Um, in fact, when I measured them out, these ones here for the top rail brackets, these are actually a 51 degree angle. And these weird ones right here for our end brackets ended up to be a 47 and a half degree angle. So all I could do here was to use longer pieces of the stock, cut the angles at either end, and then from there use my miter box to cut it to length. Um, that way I could keep my fingers away from the blade and still get the proper angles and the proper pieces. So at this point now we can assemble the top rails of our dump box and we're going to start off with these uh, angled pieces here. And we can glue, just like this, one on each side, flush with the end. And as well, we will take measurements off the print and we will glue the center pieces on where they go. We're not going to glue these ones on here until we put them onto our model. That way, if there is a little bit of a discrepancy, and if there is, because I've already tested these pieces, it might be a little less than a 64th of an inch. But if there is a bit of a discrepancy, we can push them tight up against our back trim of our dump bucket, and that will fill that gap and make it look proper. So let's get these pieces glued together. Well, while we're waiting for our top rails to dry up, um, we can glue our dump box frames in. Now guys, it's a little tricky where these go just because there's really no placement for it here on the prints. I mean, it's a little difficult to find to figure it out. But essentially, as long as you cut your hole here correctly in the bottom of your dump box, these things line up with the edge of your hole. They line up with the very front end of the dump box and then nice and parallel all the way along. 
I find that if you use some kind of a set ruler or an adjustable square, that sort of thing, you can very easily dial this in and have it perfect all the way along with no discrepancies in it. And it's very easy to check to see that it's all lined up. Now we have the holes here in the end. If you want a little more assistance with lining them up, you can always put a drill bit or a dowel through those holes and that'll help you line things up that way. So we're gonna get these glued on and let them set up and dry as well. And if you're wondering where those last four brackets go, they go right here to form the front edges of our dump box. You can see that right here on the prints. And guys, it's just a matter of gluing them into place, making sure that they're square. And at this point now, the dump box is pretty much done. We're just gonna glue in this top trim. Um, before we do though, we're gonna give it a good sanding just to make sure that all of our edges are aligned along the top. You wanna make sure that they're all flush and lined up. And then once we get that done, we can just glue this in place right here. Look at that, doesn't that look great? There we go, now we are getting somewhere. Um, guys, this is only temporarily sat in place. None of this is glued together here. There's a lot more to do. The cab is still not glued on. This entire dump bucket is not glued on, but we have a lot more pieces. I think what we're going to move on to next um, will be this cab protector here, which is the piece that extends out the front of the bucket uh, to prevent the cab from having stuff dumped on it when the dump truck is being loaded. So why don't we start off with that? And for that, we're going to need some 1 8 inch thick material. Well, I have all of the pieces that I need for this cab protector. Uh, for the most part, they're all 1 8 of an inch thick, except for this one piece, which is the, the back section, which is actually 3 16 of an inch thick and 3 8 of an inch wide. So guys, these are simple pieces. The only one that might kind of give you a little bit of grief is this angled piece. Essentially cut it to its dimensions of half inch by two and three eighths, and then just measure and draw out the slant on this thing and use your belt sander to finish it off. So we're going to glue this together. Don't get too hung up on making this thing 100% perfect. Um, do your best to make it as well as you can with things lining up, but we're gonna sand it after to clean everything up. Guys get far too hung up on pieces like this, trying to make them 100% perfect, and you'll drive yourself crazy. If it's a frame piece that needs to be perfectly square because it helps align everything else, that's a different scenario. But for something as simple as this that's going to butt on to another piece to glue in place, um, you can very easily, if it's a little off, you can very easily sand it flush and you will never see that imperfection. Okay, so let's get this piece glued together. The way this is going to go is your smallest piece here, which is the front of the protector. This is going to go right across the front section. Then the side pieces will get glued in place on the sides here, just like this on both sides. And then this gets sandwiched in between everything here, right at the back. So glue it all up and let it dry. And then we can take it over to our sandpaper on our MDF and give it a good sanding and level it all out. And there is our cab protector done. And we can glue this in place centered on our dump box. Now guys, just to illustrate the fact of not worrying too, too much about perfection, this thing looks pretty good right now, but let's have a look at what it was like before I hit it with the sandpaper. We can see here there are imperfections. There's some squeeze out I couldn't um, get cleaned up at the time as well. Those dark black lines, that is actually the reaction of the glue against my stainless steel straight edge. Um, that is what the glue does to the wood. So by a little bit of sanding, you end up with something that looks like this, and it is absolutely perfect. It is lined up all the way around. It looks amazing. 
So don't get too, too hung up on making it perfect right out of the gate. Sometimes for smaller pieces like this, you just need to get it pretty close and you can fix it up afterwards. While we're waiting for the cab cover to dry on the dump box, we're going to move on to another small piece here, and that is the canopy front bracket. Now guys, here is one finished and it looks perfect as far as the hole and the lines goes to get the groove that's in the top. Truth be told, this was done at the drill press and the scroll saw. So we've just cut our piece to its proper dimension according to the prints marked where the hole would go so that the edge of that 1 8 diameter hole is down 1 quarter of an inch from the top so the center point is actually down 3 sixteenths of an inch. We've drilled that hole and then taken it over to the scroll saw and treated it like an interior cut and then just followed through with the lines to make the slot. And after some sanding, you end up with this. So we're just going to get these glued into our dump box. They just go at the very top end of our front trim pieces. Well, the next piece that we're going to make is going to be the dump box rear flange. Now, guys, this is not a difficult piece. Um, you can just cut it to the dimensions on the plans, but you'll want to pay attention to the edges because they are actually beveled. And I've measured that bevel and it's a six degree cut. So you just want to tilt your table saw blade six degrees and then you can cut this piece. However, Depending on how good your alignment was here with the pieces of your dump bed, this piece here fits right. You just push this in right in here like this. That six degree angle will line up with the top of the dump bed and the edges will line up with the edge of your rear dump box trim and the bottom of that trim. Now guys, I have just spent an hour. While I said that the cab protector, you know, you can get away with stuff like that. If this is off, it's going to look funny. I have just spent an hour here on this sandpaper on the MDF to shape this to make it fit properly because my alignment is just slightly off. How much is it off? Well, this side of our piece is 964 thick and this side of our piece is 1164. So there is a difference there of 1 32nd of an inch between the right and the left sides. So I had to sand this with the sandpaper on the MDF applying more pressure on one side than the other and uh, even then it was just light pressure but it took about an hour to get this thing uh, shaped the way I want it but the results are there and that's what I want so I'm happy with that. So I'm going to glue this in place and now that we have this piece made I think we're going to concentrate on doing the back uh, panel or the back door of our dump bed. Well, I have the main pieces for our tailgate cut. Um, there's one part here that I'm not going to worry about. We're going to do that after, and that is this quarter inch deep hole right here. We're going we're gonna to do that just a little after. I'll show you that in just a bit. But the first thing we want to do is we're going to take our top trim piece and we're going to glue this onto our panel and line it up and clamp it and let that dry to give this panel some rigidity. Okay, so the next step in this process here, now that that is dry, is we want to put on our two side pieces, not the middle ones, just the side ones. So we will glue one here using our straight edge as a guide and we will glue one on this side again using the straight edge as a guide once they start to set don't forget to do this check to make sure that they're square you really need this whole thing to be square to make it look right well we can glue on our next middle slat on the opposite side of the one that we're waiting to dry the thing is is that on the drawing it 
doesn't show where they go. It gives us no dimensions anywhere, not even in the one-to-one -one assembly drawings. So I've kind of done some calculations, and as far as I'm concerned, um, I believe it should be one and seven sixteenths of an inch from the edge. So from the inner edge of the outside strip, we're going to space it out one and seven sixteenths and glue it in place. Once this one here is dry, we're going to do the exact same thing. And that should make it look pretty proportionate. All right. And we can see where uh, spacing them out one and seven sixteenths from the edge pretty much makes them nice and even across there. Um, we're going to wait for this one to dry and then glue it across the top and then sand the whole thing, even out any rough edges. Uh, and that panel will be pretty much done then. But at this point, I want to turn my attention to the tailgate hinges. And guys, all I've done here is I have made a marking template. And because of the wear and tear and the abuse that this piece is going to take, I'm actually going to make this out of a piece of maple. It's a little harder than the poplar, cherry, and walnut that I've been using. And it's as simple as marking these out and then cutting them with the scroll saw. And once we get that done, um, we can glue our tailgate assembly together, but we still have to deal with these little holes here, and we'll be doing that first. And unfortunately, once again, that's all the time that we have for this week. Guys, I say it almost every single week that we have made some amazing progress, and that is always true. Every little bit of progress that you make during a day I mean, that is progress toward the end result. And it doesn't really matter how long it takes or, or how much time you have invested in that, as long as you're happy with the results. What a lot of people don't realize is that sometimes one of these shows, just one 20, 25 minute show, takes two to three days of woodworking and filming just to make that one show. So while it may seem quick to you guys at 20, 25 minutes, for me, in some cases, it is days of work and days of effort. And then of course, there's all the work of rifling through all of the footage, trying to piece together something that looks like a show. Either way, guys, if you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. We have an absolutely amazing audience base here, and I'm hoping that you're gonna consider becoming a part of this. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's content. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you've learned something. I hope that you've found it, you know, if not informative, then at least a little entertaining. But more importantly, guys, I really hope that you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.